We got Chris Garguilia. He's being cornered by uh, another professional fighter from Long Island MMA. You got Hugh McKenna, another local scene staple here. He fought on the amateur circuit in New York as well. And by uh, Brian Michelino, another great coach. And Bryce is cornered by Joe from Lockdown and Chris's uh, kickboxing coach, Panarello. And they're after it right away. Yeah. Chris Man is just in there banging. Quick takedown. Now with these amateur rules, they're not allowed to strike to the head or the face while they're on the ground um, for their first two MMA fights in New York. It's called the novice rule set. So essentially on the ground, it turns into almost a grappling match. It's like combat jujitsu in a way, you know, where it's like palm strikes, but n no, not to the head here. My first and only amateur fight that I had was in New Jersey, and it was under this rule set where there was no striking to the head. So. It's going to definitely take a, a, a different style on top right now for him to uh, to get a finish here. Yeah, it's more about positional dominance than it is damage on the ground, right? Yeah, I mean, in the judge's eyes, under these novice rules, I mean, if you're on top, you're you're winning. Looks like Chris is doing well. He's staying busy though. He's you know he's punching to the body while he can, and uh, looks like he's working for a pass. So at least he's staying busy. Looks like there's an early nod over the left eye of Bryce, maybe from those uh, first exchanges that they had there uh, before the takedown. I feel like uh, Gurglia got a little bit of the better of those exchanges. It looked like he, he snuck through like two or three pretty clean shots. Chris, you got some unique insight here, having, you know, training with Chris and then working with uh, Bryce's coach as well. You got, yeah. a, you got an interesting take on this. Yeah, this is a great first fight for me here because uh, you have Joe, who was my striking coach coming up, and uh, Chris, who I train with currently. So I, I expected this to be a the traditional battle where you have the grappler uh, who's looking for submissions and his ground and pound against the, the striker. So far, it's, it's true to form with that. It's, you know, Chris with the early takedown and, and working his business on the ground here. Yeah, he's, he's going to be looking to pass here. Bryce should be looking to stand up. Uh, maybe he's waiting for the ref, hopefully tie up the head and, and stand them back up. But he's got to get a hip escape here, start making something happen, because Chris seems content to sit right in the guard and, and strike. Now Bryce is super long. Look at him setting up the arm bar here. He's I think six foot three. They said, at 155 pounds, it's probably one of the longest uh, 155 pounders out there. The yeah, that's a unique uh, physical advantage. You know, it's like a uh, Cole Miller almost. You know, very similar body type. Eric, you're a similar body type. So here, you know, on the ground, what would you be doing here, working to get up? I mean, I. I never have my back on the ground in any fights, and all I immediately work for is to stand up. I. 10 seconds worth of submission attempts, and then stand up. That's all you can really uh, That's all you can really do here because every second you're on the back is the second you're losing the round in the judge's eyes. Right. These are short rounds, and you, you got to make the most of them. So far, you know, Chris has been dominant with his control, so I'd say at the end of this round so far, it's looking 10-9 for Chris, huh? Absolutely. Good first round. Oh, they're still getting after it. Yeah, <laughs> working right through the break. Bryce has a good knot under that eye, Chris. It's, uh, I saw it now, he's got a good knot. Yeah, he's gonna need to do a better job of circling and, and staying away from Chris during those exchanges. Because if Chris gets another takedown, it's gonna become extremely tough as he proceeds to get up off the mat. So he's gotta do a better job of keeping his range here. Keep in between, away. in between rounds here, you know, you guys are also fighters as well. So, what, what are you thinking right now? If you're, you know, you're Bryce, you know, you're down around. What's your, what's your mindset? Well, I've been right there where Bryce is with Joe, so I know that he's trying to get him to get his heart rate down. He's giving him good instruction right now, probably telling him that he, he's going to need to stay away from those grappling exchanges. So expect to see more length here from Bryce this round, and uh, to get more volume going. About to start round two. Here we go. Good front kick to start. And Chris gives that front kick right back and shoots him for the takedown. Yeah, he's changing off to a single here. He's going to look to trip and finish. And he's got the takedown. Now, these novice rules fights, I always tell the guys that I'm helping get ready, there's like three portions of these fights. There's the kickboxing portion, then there's the grappling portion, which is on the ground, where you're not really allowed to strike. 
and then there's just pushing each other up against the fence. <laughs> so those are like the three things that you got to get good at. You got to be the one pushing up against the fence, the one landing more strikes if you're doing the kickboxing, or the one on top if you're on the ground where Chris is now in full mount. This is a dangerous position now for Bryce, you know, full mount. Uh, if this was not novice rules, he'd be in a lot of trouble right now. Absolutely. This is one of the most dangerous positions in MMA. If he, what he should be doing here is a little bit of hip escaping and trying to wall walk to, to create some height and to create a scramble. But he, he seems content to just kind of hold on to Chris and hope the ref uh, stands it up here. Yeah, he's, got to, he's really got to get out of there if he wants to win this round. I mean, as a taller fighter, it's sometimes difficult to, uh, to starch these takedowns of the, the shorter guys that are just able to get under you, but you really have to work your distancing. I mean, when I'm fighting somebody that's shorter than me, I very rarely work kicks in in the first round or until I'm, like, content and I'm used to the distancing and, uh, and the timing of, uh, of them because I've had, like, early on in my career where I, like, land, like, the most brutal liver kicks but then get taken down and, like, you lose the round because of it. Yeah, space can be your best friend as a, a taller, longer person in the division, but it can also be your worst enemy if you're letting people inside constantly. And yeah. with a guy like Chris and the experienced grappling, he's going to be inside all day during this fight. It looks like Bryce is working hard. You see him bringing his feet up. It looks like he's trying to trap Chris's feet to that bridge and roll sweep. So he is working. He's getting busy. He's just he's, he's working on his escapes. He's doing what he needs to be doing. It's just it's a tall order against a skilled grappler. Yeah, we can all attest that Chris is definitely an experienced grappler, and no matter who he has in mount, it's going to be tough for them to hip escape and get out of there. So there's a, there's a lot of energy right now being spent by Bryce, and you're going to see that pay dividends in the third. Here we go. Oh, he's coming up. We've got a choke set up. Oh, Chris has that choke in deep. That looks deep. That's deep, guys. He's fighting hard. He's fighting hard. He's rolling him to his back. He looks like he's almost out. He's Good defense. Great scramble. Excellent job defending by Bryce, and he's on his feet. Here we go, here's some volume. He's landing. Beautiful technical escape by Bryce. Got right up and started firing right away as well. He's, he knows, he sees the urgency and he's, he's out here, to, he's fighting to win. 10 seconds left in the round. If I was Chris, I'd probably just ride it out and just push him up against the fence a little bit. Yep, and there's the bell. So if you were a judge right now with that heavy action, you know, in the last 30 seconds, do you think that sways the judges' opinions? Chris landed pretty well. I mean, uh, Bryce landed very well in that last exchange. Bryce landed very well at the end there. I just think that the full mount and to the extent of time that he sat in the full mount, that's probably going to lean that round again toward Chris. It's looking like he's up 2-0 well here going into the third. Right. So far, pretty exciting first bout. These guys are out here swinging. This is great. I know I can call back to my first amateur bout, and the adrenaline was pumping. Yeah. More so than even my first professional bout. Because by then, yeah. you've had some experience, you've been in the gym, and you know what to expect. This first go round in, in your amateur debut, I mean, you are just, your adrenaline is absolutely rocking. Yeah. There's, there's not a whole Ladies lot of thought process. It's just go, go, go. And it's all, it's all fight or flight, you know? It's all adrenaline. You're going to watch after. It's almost like a blackout. Yeah. <laughs> no, you can't tell anybody what happened in the fight until you watch it. <laughs> I just know I won. That's it. What happened? I'm not sure. Third and final round. Chris is doing a good job getting inside and landing like one and two punch combinations. Looks to me like fatigue might be setting in just a little bit for him, and we lost the mouthpiece. But his, his shots look a little less crisp right now than they did in the first couple rounds. Great refing there. The ref was wise enough to pick up that mouthpiece that action there, while Chris just immediately picked it up, and he stopped the action before a shot got thrown. He got them going right away again, too, which is great. And we got the action going right in front of us. I think I just got hit in the eye by some sweat or spit. <laughs> They're pressed up on the cage here right in front of us. Bryce is doing a very good job of defending that takedown and making Chris work for it. Yeah, this is going to be a pivotal scramble right here that takes place, whether this takedown is successful or not. And it is. They're working on the cage here on the ground after that takedown right in front of us. You know, here, as you mentioned, with the time being short, he's got to look to get to his feet here, create a scramble and, uh, and exchange again. Yeah, the, uh, the urgency should be on now to uh, work to get to your feet as quick as possible. Push 
This has been the, uh, the, the story of the fight, the, the grappler trying to get it to the ground and the striker trying to stay upright. Absolutely. They're, they're back in the guard. With a smaller cage, as opposed to some of the professional cages, it can be very, very hard to, to use that footwork and to stay away from a, a determined grappler who wants that takedown. Chris looking to pass here, knee slicing. Chris looks like he's using really good head pressure here. He's, he's using his head well to control Bryce's, uh, you know, body movements. He's got his head pressed into his head, and that, that doesn't feel good, you know, and it, it really makes it hard to operate when you're on the bottom with somebody's head in your chest or your chin. They can be miserable down there. Chris is doing a great job of every time Bryce seems to climb up and, and get a, a leg up toward getting to his feet, he pulls him and sucks him right away from the cage again, starts him back at square one. One of the big advantages of having that top position in these novice fights is staying in half guard and, and holding on to your opponent's shin guard, not letting them let, get that leg out to stand up. Yeah, getting wrapped up into half guard here with the shins on can take quite a while to get yourself free again. Chris back to the full mount now. Bryce looks like he might sweep be rolling attempt him. Here. Oh, looks like he's rolling him. Here we go. He's got that reversal. Wow, well done by Bryce. Very well done. Big reversal. Oh, Leg lock whoa, attempt. whoa, big got arm, arm bar. Oh, he's tapping. It. Oh, submission. Wow. Wow. Very Great well done. Lock. Great arm lock by Chris. That was a very smooth transition. And the savvy jiu-jitsu experience comes and shows through there. All right, we have our announcer this evening, David Diamante in the octagon. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Anthony Andreacci calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, two minutes and 43 seconds of the third and final round. Your winner by armbar, Chris Bignamoria. All right, guys, I'm here with Chris, Big Nog. He just got his first MMA victory. How does it feel? Feels great. That was an exciting fight. We were just saying, if we didn't tell people that this was a debuting fight between two guys, you would have never known. A lot of high-level action, a lot of good exchanges. Was your job to come in here and implement that grappling like you did tonight? Hell yeah, that's what I'm known for, bro. You should know. <laughs> I do know. Good job. Very impressive. So what's next? Train hard, fight again. All right. Thank you, Chris. Good luck.